Several months after support for the old Microsoft Edge ended, Microsoft finally gave Xbox users a new browser. Was it worth the wait? It's time to find out. So the Xbox legacy browser, Microsoft Edge, was deprecated on March the 9th, 2021. So no more updates, no more support, and we were left with a pants browser that became a useless pants browser. Six months later, in September, Microsoft finally rolled out the new Microsoft Edge. And Xbox Insiders saw a pre-release in April, and it looked very promising. But the six-month delay to replace the dead browser couldn't have come at a worse time. People were in lockdown, forced to work and school from home, and the Xbox was really helping families as an option to connect to Microsoft team meetings until March when Teams platform got a series of updates that halted that ability. Come October and COVID is on the rise again across Europe. In fact, the number of cases in the UK alone is almost double the number of cases this time last year. So we're all looking forward to another Christmas at home. Yay! Now, if lockdown is likely, then the new Edge browser may have finally come at a right time. The pre-release version I saw in the summer looked very promising, and Microsoft are slowly adding more functionality. But what can we do with this new Microsoft Edge that we couldn't do before? Microsoft has switched the browser engine, so they've moved from Edge HTML to the open source Chromium, which is the one that Google Chrome is based on. Now, this is not news. We've known this was the intent since 2018, before it was released to the PC. And we've seen the perks of this. But what can this engine upgrade offer Xbox users? Well, the Edge browser will be faster. It couldn't be any slower. It ran like a pig on mud with no legs. But you will see an improvement. Uh, and you can also see many websites that the previous version didn't support. The only problem I've found is each time you start the browser after an Xbox reboot, it does take some time to load. The new Edge does give a more secure browsing experience and slightly more stable than its predecessor. I say slightly, it still crashes. But what I really like about it is it brings improved compatibility with a lot of hardware, namely the mouse, something the previous browser did not support at all. Plus, it now fully supports the keyboard uh, beyond the basic letters, numbers, enter key, etc. And this fully support for the keyboard is essential for productivity. And we got a webcam and microphone to work with the browser, and you'll see that in action shortly. So with the hardware connectivity comes vast improvements in compatibility with most modern web platforms, not only for productivity, but also for online gaming and entertainment websites and gamers might want to explore that deeper. So let's have a look at what I found when we experimented with the new Edge browser. When starting the new browser for the first time since running the Xbox, it takes on average over a minute to load. Now I tested this on three other consoles and they all had similar loading times, but subsequent loads are very quick until you restart your Xbox. Now I tested the browser on both a wireless and mini wireless keyboard and both work perfectly. If the mouse sensitivity is not to your liking, you can adjust it in the Xbox settings. So the browser has all the typical settings allowing you to change the appearance, privacy and security settings. If you log into the Microsoft account connected to your Xbox, you can synchronize your favorites along with any accounts and passwords to save you some typing. So all the typical features are there except extensions and the ability to download files. And this is going to hinder some of the older Xbox One models, which is going to be um, a bit limited on the hardware, I'm afraid. So my first test was to connect to office.com and your Xbox account is a Microsoft Home account, Outlook.com, Hotmail.com, and so on. So your Xbox screenshots and video captures are stored inside your OneDrive. And you can not only access your OneDrive and play those videos and media and screens, but you can also 
edit your office documents using the online office apps, Word, Excel, PowerPoint and the likes. And for the Microsoft 365, I even had a little play around with Power Automate. And although it was a little bit more fiddly than normal, I managed to edit quite successfully one of my flows. Finally, and probably the most commonly used Microsoft 365 app on the Xbox of recent, Microsoft Teams and Meetings. For this, I tested a £20 simple USB webcam bought on Amazon and a USB microphone headset. I also tried headphones through the GamePad wireless keyboard. Once I allowed the browser access to use the accessories, they were immediately available. Sound is as good as you get on Teams using a PC browser and I was relieved to see the webcam light up with very little fuss. A word of warning, when I started Yammer in the browser, it crashed out. To make things worse, when I restarted the browser, it remembered and kept the tab open and kept crashing. I was unable to close the tab. I had to uninstall and reinstall the browser to fix the problem. And this has been reported to Microsoft. So what about online games? Well, my first test had to be my favorite site, retrogames.cc. If you're a fan of the old classic consoles and main ROMs, this site has them and I was delighted to see that my favorite games worked really well. Not only that, but I could play either my gamepad or I could customize the keys for a connected keyboard. With some of the more demanding games such as Tekken, there were issues with sound uh, and some of the PlayStation ROMs would not work. I also tried armorgames.com or mad.com as it is now and these contain a few Unity engine games. Many of these work better via keyboard than the gamepad once you got past all the adverts. Fog or freeonlinegames.com also worked really well uh, and also newgrounds.com. Um, pretty much all the sites I tried the games were very successful. And then there are the online streaming services such as Google Stadia and Steam. And these worked really well and both supported the gamepad. Although you'll want to plug in a keyboard so you can press the escape key to quit a game without having to close down the browser and reopen it. And finally, I took a look at streaming online entertainment through YouTube, Plex, Amazon Prime Video and Netflix. Now, streaming video on the previous Edge browser was awful, so if there was no app in the store for your streaming service, you were bang out of luck. I'm really happy that the new version of Edge is excellent. For me, the current YouTube app on the Xbox is limited, kind of cumbersome to use, especially trying to use a keyboard with it. But YouTube in Edge allows me to get around videos, subscriptions, I can view the video as a thumbnail whilst I view and add comments, and I can create a playlist very easily. This alone was worth waiting for New Edge. The same goes with Plex. Again, the app is limited in Xbox, but with Plex in the browser, I can even search metadata. So for example, uh, with a video, uh, I can click an actor and then see all the videos they've appeared in. I can also add videos into playlists and scrape my servers and update the media, superb. Amazon Prime and Netflix, the same. Really great to use them in the browser. Please subscribe to this channel. Um, I will be looking at a few more Xbox features as well as the usual Microsoft 365 apps that I tend to offer support on.
So you can contact me on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, ask me questions, send me any problems you're facing, and I'll do my best to find the answers. And that's what this channel is all about. Stay safe and have fun.